A very warm welcome to this evening's Eye on Africa. I'm James Creedon. Here are our headlines this Monday evening. Demonstrators in Sudan have been calling for the release of dozens of jailed people after the military grabbed power back in October. We'll bring you all the latest on a day of protests in Khartoum and elsewhere in the country. In Ethiopia, a multi-billion dollar mega dam has now started generating electricity along the Blue Nile River. The massive construction project has not been without controversy. More on that coming up. And in Benin, France 24 catches up with some contemporary artists. Uh, uh, this is the country welcomes home 26 artworks taken by France during the colonial era. Thanks for watching uh, France 24's Eye on Africa. Now, before uh, we get to our main stories this evening, news uh, just into us in the past hour or so, 55 fatalities uh, have been recorded, at least 55 fatalities in Burkina Faso after a mining explosion. This at the site of... Uh, uh, medical and local sources citing that and this is uh, information that has been coming into us in the past hour or so. We'll bring you more on uh, that the story uh, as it comes to us. That accident taking place in the commune of uh, Gomblora in the province of Pony. At least 55 deaths in a mining accident. Now, in, uh, in our main uh, stories uh, this evening, to, we're, we go first to Sudan, where determined as ever, uh, thousands of protesters took to the streets of Khartoum and other cities on Monday. They were again calling for a return to civilian rule after the military seized power in October. Uh, there were also calls for those who have been imprisoned to be released. At least 82 people have been killed by security forces in crackdowns on regular protests since at the end of last year. These latest demonstrations come just a day after the UN a human rights expert Adama Dieng arrived on his first official visit to the country. Our regional correspondent Caroline Kimeu has more. Dieng's visit comes amid continuing protests that have been taking place since the October 25th military takeover last year. Uh, his arrival on Sunday coincided with the killing of another protester, bringing the total of those killed to 82. Now, uh, on Monday, there were protests as well that took place in major cities, including Port Sudan and Khartoum. Dieng is set to meet with military generals as well as civil society organizations and diplomats to discuss the way forward. However, his visit is coming at a time when various UN and international mediation efforts have failed and there's growing skepticism among Sudanese. Our team spoke to people on the ground. The UN being here in Sudan is a useless thing. We haven't benefited anything from them. The situation is exactly the same. Every day we lose people. Every day people are killed. We don't want any external intervention. They have ruined our country and we don't want anything from anyone. With our own resources, we can build our country. Despite the growing sentiment against some international efforts, analysts say that these kind of visits may exert some level of sporadic control on military action. The international community has been consistent in calling for an end to arbitrary arrests. And ahead of Dieng's visit, resistance committees reported that 114 people had been transferred from Soba prison, where they had been held without charge, into police custody, where they're expected to have access to formal channels. Now, it has drawn a lot of criticism over the last uh, 11 years since the construction project was launched. But uh, regardless, the so-called Great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is now up and running. It's uh, the largest hydroelectric power station on the continent. Fraser Jackson takes a closer look. With great fanfare, Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed inaugurates the start of electricity production at the Great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Over 10 years after breaking ground, Africa's largest dam and hydroelectric power plant is now operational, standing 145 metres tall and stretching a 1.8 kilometre wide section of the Blue Nile. The project has faced funding difficulties, with taxpayers' money going towards the dam, which is estimated to have cost 4.2 billion US dollars. A source of national pride, the dam has sown discord with Egypt and Sudan two countries downstream of the project which worry about their water supply.
ለማደናቀፍ የወጣው ጉልበት ግዜ ገንዘብ ቀርቶ ለልማት በጋራ እንድንቆም በትብብር በጋራ እንድንቆም በታላቅ ተህተና ካደረ ጭምር ጥሬን ላቀርብላችሁ ፈልጋለሁ After announcing that it had fallen below the water poverty line in January, Cairo is demanding that Ethiopia not fill up the dam too fast and regularly threatens military intervention. Last summer, the UN urged diplomatic discussions between three countries. Those calls, however, didn't stop Ethiopia from pushing ahead with the second phase of filling in July. Abiy Ahmed has promised to sell energy generated at cost price to his neighbors and maintains that the dam will benefit the entire region economically. Mali's lawmakers have approved a plan allowing the military junta to rule for up to five years, this despite regional sanctions imposed on Mali over uh, delayed elections. The parliament, which is largely dominated by the army, also decided that the country's interim president cannot stand for a future democratic election. And Mali's military rulers in initially promised to stage a vote by this month, February 2022, this after staging a coup back in August 2020. Now, in Harare, thousands of Zimbabweans attended the launch of Nelson Chamisa's party, Citizens' Coalition for Change. Uh, Chamisa formerly led the opposition Movement for Democratic Change. His new party is a rebranded political formation with sites firmly set on by-elections in late March. Those votes are seen as a dress rehearsal for general elections in 2023. Incumbent President Emerson Mnangagwa's ruling ZANU-PF party is hoping to gain a parliamentary majority. Nadine Tehran has more. Some supporters even climbed trees to hear the promises of a new dawn Nelson Chamisa's Citizens' Coalition for Change vows to bring. Supporters showed up in a sea of yellow at the party's launch rally in Harare yesterday, called Yellow Sunday. 44-year-old Chamisa is inspiring the youth's hope of a young president, but the amount of supporters he attracted is also bringing hope to those Zimbabweans who want to be released from ZANU-PF's 41-year rule. This despite many hurdles like roadblocks, stringent police orders and a partial internet service breakdown suspected to limit live streaming of the event. 13 of Chamisa's CCC supporters were arrested on Saturday and allegedly brutalized by police for sporting rally stickers. Zimbabwean President and ZANU-PF leader Emerson Nangagwa also attracted a large crowd at his rally held on the same day. But a ZANU-PF spokesperson denies working with police to sabotage the CCC. Zimbabweans are heading to the polls on the 26th of March to fill more than 100 local and parliamentary seats. The electoral watchdog, Team Pashedu, is accusing the Zimbabwean Electoral Commission of rigging voters' rolls, not following due processes and other anomalies as Zimbabweans are registering to vote. Today, Monday, is International Mother Language Day. There is a growing concern in different parts of the planet about the rapid disappearance of indigenous languages. In Kenya, the Yaku tribe is in the country's Rift Valley is an example of one culture fighting to keep its native tongue alive. These students are learning Yakunte a language declared extinct by UNESCO a decade ago. Their teacher is one of only three people in the world who can speak it fluently. I'm not the pillar of this language. So, I mean, it's for now for me to commit everything, to sacrifice everything, so that I will never even a single day slide. Because when I slide, I've just spoken it, the language will die. Yakunte was widely spoken in Mukogodo Forest by her ancestors until the 1940s. But the larger, more powerful Maasai community moved onto Yaku land, diluting their native tongue and culture. Now Juliana and her tribe are looking to revive it. It's a professor. Oh. UNESCO estimates that roughly a tenth of African languages may disappear within the next century. Juliana's grandfather taught her Yakunte when she was a little girl. He is now its last native speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Juliana is involved in various efforts to save the language. English, With the assistance of this NGO, she's recording an audio dictionary for a Yakunte learning app. 
But now with technology, you can put audio, visual, and uh, you know, and the text together into one. So that's the advantage that technology has brought. They plan to finish recording the dictionary by December 2022. Juliana hopes her efforts will pay off and future generations will inherit the language. Uh, over the weekend, Benin's uh, president, Patrice Talon, opened an exhibition of historic artworks returned by France last year. Uh, Beninese are also invited as part of that exhibition to discover the second part uh, where 34 contemporary Beninese artists present around 100 works. And France 24 caught up with one contemporary Beninese artist, Marius Dansou. Here's what he had to say about the restitution of artistic treasures and the importance of that in connecting Benin's past with its present. I'm twisting this iron to make a pattern. This is a project that covers African heads of states. I made an installation which I called Graveyard of African Heads of State. And the whole thing basically told the history of Africa. Because one thing that I realized was that a lot of people don't know much about the continent's history. In that installation, I had set up a few traps by including flags of countries that no longer exist. And a lot of people were unable to recognize them. So what I wanted to do was to encourage people to go and do more research and find out more about those countries. We're in the workshop that belongs to François Azianguet. He's a plastic artist and this is where he works. We're neighbors, we always visit each other and tease one another. He works a lot using sheet metal. He shapes it and there are a lot of shapes. He does a lot of welding too. There's really a wide variety of shapes and sizes in this workshop. All right, that's all for this edition of Iron Africa. Do stay tuned. We'll be back in one hour with uh, more news on that story of a tragedy in Burkina Faso. 55 deaths at least uh, at a gold panning uh, mining site. More on that coming up later on this evening. Thanks for watching France 24.